Coach, what will be the main focal point in terms of offensive cohesion and getting the extra passes made? Well, I think, you know, it, it, talking about Cleveland and looking forward, um, you know, they're, they're a really aggressive defensive team. They, they blow through a lot of actions. They put a lot of pressure on you, um, handsy. So, um, you know, it's one thing to be spatially disciplined, but, you know, being able to get off the ball in a timely manner. I thought the other night we, we actually generated a ton of wide open threes. I think 80% of them were uh, assisted. So you feel pretty good about the process now. You generate a lot of open looks, specifically below the break. I think 11 from the corners. We just struggled to step up and make them. But um, you know, then the next layer is if they're not if they're not falling, then you know we have to probably drive the closeouts, get to the paint. You know, maybe create a backside three or get to the rim and potentially the free throw line. But I think uh, it starts with us being spatially disciplined. Uh, I think creating leads, having a great screening game, great cutting game, that I think opens up the floor for you know teammates. What's it look like, Gallo? Was uh today is he all healed? Uh, he was a partial participant, did out, obviously did a little extra after, uh, but he's trending. Um, is any, did anybody else not participate? No. What stands out to you about just the, the way the Cavs are playing this year? Well, it's, it's tough, you know, they're, they're kind of battling the injury bug a bit. Um, you know, two big pieces for them haven't participated in the last handful of games. Uh, but they're, they're still very dangerous. And you've got a guy like Mitchell, playing the point. He's got the ball in his hands. Um, Three-level scorer who also facilitates at a high clip. Um, you've seen Jared Allen's um, usage, his touches, and his efficiency jump up over these handful of games as well. He's putting a lot of pressure on defenses and, and scoring at an elite level you know, in the paint. Um, they're using him at the top of the floor, and, and they, they do a terrific job of cutting and moving, um, which is hard to guard when you have the level of shooting that they can put out on the floor. Um, that level of cutting just opens up the floor. Puts a lot of pressure on that back line. Wes, with um, how well Tyus has been doing lately, are you noticing any him actively improving his game, or is it him kind of everything that he's doing now you've seen before, and it's just like more of like a settling in from his? Game? I think a little bit of both. I think it's settling in, and he's kind of getting more comfortable with what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. um, getting more comfortable with his teammates, where they want their spots, their shots, um, and he's he's been aggressive offensively. Um, not as far as hunting, you know, and, and trying to actively search out his own looks, but taking advantage of what the defense gives him. Um, shooting it better from three, which, which helps, and now forces teams to honor him out on the floor, which, you know, opens up the pick and roll game, opens up, you know, uh, the rest of the paint. When he came in and, and you knew you were getting him over the summer, was that an area where you were kind of like, okay, here's what part of your game I feel like we mm -hmm. can play with or we could kind of push you on? Yeah, for sure. And I think he's. He's leaning in uh, not only on that, but you know he's, he's showing us some things too, some things that he likes, uh, you know, some spots where he's very comfortable, um, and you don't really know the extent of those you know areas until you have a, a guy in the fold and you're able to coach him. What are the keys to containing a player like Donovan Mitchell, who's averaging almost 28 a game? Yeah, it's uh, not easy. <laughs> I think the biggest piece is getting him under control um, early. He's really good at rejecting screens, and he, you know he's got the ball in the string, so. Getting into him and taking away his comfort level. Um, at times, you're going to have to get the ball out of his hands and, and do different things schematically, but uh, just not a steady dose of one coverage. Um, and there's some times where um, you got to force him to be a facilitator, which he's certainly capable of doing. But uh, at least it you know gets the ball out of his hands. Hi, uh, Coach. Uh Early on in the rebuild, you guys are trying to solidify culture. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at Kyle Kuzma, he just got an award for a lot of the work he does off the court. Mm -hmm. How important is his leadership on and off the court for trying to solidify that culture? Yeah, that's a uh, it's a big piece for us. You know, it's it's of course an honor for him, uh, but it's it's something he's done you know here for quite some time, and it's it's, it's great that he's gotten recognized for it. But uh, you know that that goes you know uh, goes a long way. You know, not only for us, but just gives you a little, a little insight on who he is as a person, you know, what, what really matters. You know, he's able to use his platform and, um, you know, put that to certain causes that mean something to him. And he's done that here. He, do, he does it back in, in, at home. But, you know, it's a, it's a big, you know, kind of like light on the character of this group, specifically him. Like getting good off basketball movement and, uh, and getting shots that you want after getting to the second and third sides. Good question. Um, I would say, you know, knowing our spacing, um, knowing when to, to cut, and this goes for me especially, like, and it's the bigs, I think, uh, 
when you cut and then being able to space back out, you know, uh, being aware of that and just being able to shake up, I'm sorry, out of the corner uh, when the ball is you know, going the opposite way and just watching film and you know, seeing the areas that we can cut. And then, you know, you want someone to be able to adjust off the penetration, but then you also want that good spacing. So it's, it's a combination. How tough is this Cavs team, especially for players with the big <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're tough. Yeah, they got good bigs. Um, they're a good team. It's always fun to play there in Cleveland. So uh, it'll be fun to go play two games there. In terms of disruption for Donovan Mitchell, I know it's tough. He's averaging almost 28 points a game, but what would be the defensive emphasis on him to kind of get him a little uncomfortable? Yeah, he's a great player. Um, you know, it's going to take a team effort. Uh, I think the coaches have done a great job um, just trying to uh, emphasize being in our help spots uh, on the perimeter and being aware of that. So I think that'll be a, a key focus for us. Mike, have you seen improvement from these guys? And, and if so, just kind of generally from the team. And if so, where would you say you've noticed it most? this kind of point of the season? Yeah, I think that our togetherness has improved in terms of how we are moving the ball. Um, and, you know, I think we have been playing better basketball recently. And, uh, you know, I think just the, the ball is flowing. Um, I think that guys are you know, playing more unselfishly defensively and, and giving up, like I was talking about earlier, being in those fill spots, you know, that, that takes commitment because, you know, you're kind of leaving your guy open a bit, right? So it's just kind of like a chain reaction in terms of the defense. So uh, I think that we've we've improved in those areas. Obviously, we still have a long ways to go, but uh, I like where we're headed. Defensively, when you talk about kind of filling in those gaps you guys are trying to get too high up, how much, what does that take for you mentally, not just the trust, but Wes has talked a lot about you have to trust your help defense and not leave your guy. How do you get better at that? Um, by actually being better on the ball. So, yeah, I think that, like, um, those positions are there so that, you know, um, we're able to try to keep them out of the paint. But ultimately, the better job that we do on the ball, like, the less you have to help there, right? And so then you can see that he's not penetrating as much and you're able to get back out to your guy. What's uh, being in an NBA team-wide film session like? And what have you learned over the years about, I guess, the, the best way to make sure that they're productive? Good question. Um, that's where the money's made to me. It's individually as a team, you know, for me, it's my 11th year in the NBA. I didn't watch that much film in college, to be honest. You know, we only watch film if we lost, you know, if it didn't, if it didn't go well. And uh, I think for me, you know, I've seen the, the importance of it. And even when things are going well, even when we're winning, still learning from it, right? Still seeing areas you can improve individually and as a team. And then I think also it, it it balances things out. Like sometimes you might think that, oh, we played a great game or I played a great game and you watch and it's like, yeah, it was all right. Or you think, oh, we played a really bad game or I played a really bad game. It's like, no, it was okay. It's, you know, some, usually I feel like it's somewhere in the middle. So I think it's kind of like humbles you in that regard and is that you're able to learn and then move on better from it and then like be able to work on things and practice that you saw from the film. Do NBA and, teams watch more films than they used, more film than they used to? Um, it's a good, uh, uh mm, I don't know. I mean, some of the teams I've been on, it's, it's all been about the same, I would say. Yeah. I understand they, they can be naturally uncomfortable, right? What's it like being called out in front of your peers and, and not, you know, taking the wrong lessons from Oh, that? you want to be called. I want it, like, as a player, you want to be the one that the coaches and the players, you know, they want – that they feel comfortable calling you out because it's like it shows that you can take it and that they believe in you that you can do better, you know. So I think that's, you know, like, you know, that's what you want. So I think that, you know, that's still an area that we can improve as a culture, just being able to hold each other more accountable because it shows that you have confidence in each other.